If you declare a variable, it can be referenced throughout the whole application. Thus, why typically it's called a global variable. Something I want to show you before we get into this any further is you click on the file pull down menu and you'll see an item down here called variables. So at the very top, you'll see global and it will list out all the variables that are used in this application. So we're about to use this a variable here called underscore my variable. And you see that it has a value of one right now for me. So it is set in two places, one for the on visible for the screen. It's uh, so screens have events like on visible, on hidden. And then we also have uh, an icon that sets it up as well. So if we do want to change the name of this variable, you have to change it in this set. Essentially how you create a variable is you use a function called set, simply set, the name of the variable that you want to use, comma, and the second parameter is the value that you want to put into that variable. So let's get back to the screen here. All right, so we'll follow their steps on the side here. Number one is set the on select action of icon add one. So I believe this icon right here. Yeah, it's called icon add one. I typically prefix my icons. I'm glad to see that they use some type of a prefix here, but I typically use ICO. That's what I see in the industry. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as, as icon add one. That's fine. They want us to go into the on select. So right now you see this little drop down. It already has on select selected. So we don't need to go up to action. And we'll actually use that set function to set a variable. So the first time you use set, it sort of creates the variable. The first time you use the set and any subsequent times, any other places in your application is actually going to put a value in there as well as the first time, of course. But um, if you have no sets, then that variable doesn't exist. Here we'll say we we'll use underscore. Again, I, I, I create all my, my variable names like a, a global variable like we're using here with the set keyword. I just use VAR, but we're just going to keep it consistent with what they have here and, and use the underscore. So it looks like my variable is is right there. It's not the top one, so I'm not going to hit tab. I'm just going to click on it, my variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the current value of my variable. Okay. And we're going to add one to it. Okay. And step number two, set the on select action of the subtract one. So we're going to do something similar to save ourselves some time. I'm going to click on that icon that we're just on and on the on select, I'm going to copy that code. I'm going to click on that downward arrow icon and on select is selected here in this drop down. So I'm going to go in and just paste that in. And instead of the plus one, I'm going to say minus one. Okay. Step three, play your app and test to complete this exercise. Use up icon to increase the numbers, increase the number of goodies. Let's do that. Hit play. There we go. Of course, my icon is very big. It sort of covers up the text box, but uh, there you go. And if I click on the downward, it's going to decrease. Now, what happens if I keep clicking on this? It's going to go down to the negative. Well, we may not want that to happen, right? So let's get out of this and let's look what else they have here. Um, a bonus challenge. Make this subtract button disappear when the value has reached zero using the if function that we used that we used in the previous lesson in the visible property. So you can make something appear or disappear by changing the visible property. So if we go down to visible for this icon, you said it's set to true. If you can see it on the screen, generally it's going to be true. Unless you have an expression, a dynamic expression here. So let's say, let's use a, an if statement, if, and we'll say that variable, my variable, as long as that is greater than zero, We'll say true, otherwise false. Okay, so let's test this out. That's what they wanted us to do, to use that if that if function. So it's negative nine. So if we had done this before, it would have never gotten to a negative number. So in this application, the business requirements say there shouldn't be a number, a negative number of goodies, okay? So we see that that works. Now, let me just sort of show you a, a programmer's way of looking at this particular problem. This item here already returns a true or false value. Because we're returning a true and a false here, this if function is gonna return a true or false, false value of, obviously, of course, as you can see there, right? Well, that really isn't necessary. So the visible property is a true or false or a Boolean, as programmers call that a Boolean value, we could just get rid of all this stuff and just have this Boolean evaluated expression here. And it would work exactly the same way. So if I run this to test that, 
it's good to exercise or to practice what you've learned. So it's good that we use the if function again, but you don't always have to use an if, uh, especially if it's going to evaluate true, true or false anyway. Okay. So uh, let's look at this little reset icon. What, what goes on here? So this is going to reset it to one. As you see, they're using the set function. They're going to set that to one. Okay. And just to show you, this screen has an on visible and on hidden. So this is code that is going to occur whenever the screen shows up and when it disappears. Okay, so if I click on that, you see that it initializes that variable to one. So let's click on this button and see that. There we go. It's one. We change it, click on it. It's going to set it back to one. So variables are very useful. You'll be using them a lot as you write applications. Did you know this is a part of a 20 part series which goes over all the basics of Power Apps? And if you liked this video, chances are you'll want to check out the other parts as well. I'll put the links down below to the playlist. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can get dense six months of Power App struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power App Deep Dive Masterclass.